The next stage in the history of pi deals with infinite series and infinite product representations of pi. And the first one that was ever found is that pi divided by 4 is equal to 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh and so on. The next term would be plus 1 ninth. And this series was originally discovered by the Indian mathematician Madhava. And Madhava lived around 1350 to 1425 CE. Though these dates are just approximate, historians aren't sure exactly when Madhava lived. And this series was actually rediscovered by two different Europeans, the mathematicians James Gregory and Gottfried Leibniz. And they found this series in the 1670s since they didn't know any of Madhava's previous work. Now if you actually wanted to use this series to find any digits of pi, you would have to add up a huge amount of these terms if you consider each one of these a term. And if we add the first 150 terms, we get as an approximation of pi that it's about 3.1349. So even with these 150 terms, we still only have two decimal places of accuracy. And to get 100 digits of accuracy, we have to add 10 to the 50th terms. And the number 10 to the 50th is a 1 followed by 50 zeros. So we have to add up 10 to the 50th of these terms to get 100 digits of accuracy. So mathematicians would say that this series has a very slow rate of convergence. And Madhava found a slight modification of this series, which he used to actually compute digits of pi. And the series that he was able to find is that pi is equal to the square root of 12 multiplied by the infinite sum of 1 minus 1 over 3 times 3 to the first plus 1 over 5 times 3 squared minus 1 over 7 times 3 cubed and so on. This series is infinitely long. And he used this series to find 11 digits of pi, and this was around the year 1400 CE, and later this was extended to 13 digits of pi, though it's unknown whether or not Madhava found these 13 digits or it was the result of his followers, since unfortunately all of Madhava's original work was lost, so what we do know about him comes from his followers. So after Madhava, in the year 1593, the French mathematician Francois Viette found a product formula for pi. So this is Viette's formula, which is that 2 divided by pi is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2 multiplied the square root of 2 plus root 2 divided by 2 multiplied by the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus root 2 divided by 2 and this pattern continues forever and since each of these are multiplied together we would call this an infinite product and Viette was able to use this product by multiplying term by term to find nine digits of pi and about 60 years after Viette, in the year 1655, we have the mathematician John Wallace, who found what is known as Wallace's product, that pi divided by 2 is equal to the product of all of the even numbers squared divided by the product of all of the odd numbers squared.
though his product converges very slowly, so he didn't use it to find many digits of pi. And in the year 1699, we have the English mathematician Abraham Sharp who used a variation of the series pi over 4 is equal to 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth and so on to find 71 digits of pi and this result was actually a new world record since the old world record found by polygonal approximations around 1630 only found 38 digits of pi unfortunately for sharp though this world record didn't last very long since in the year 1707 the mathematician John Mackin found another formula for pi that pi divided by 4 is equal to 4 multiplied by the infinite sum of 1 fifth minus 1 over 3 times 5 cubed plus 1 divided by 5 times 5 to the fifth minus 1 divided by 7 times 5 to the seventh and so on. This goes on forever. And the next term would be 1 divided by 9 times 5 to the ninth. And from this he subtracts another infinite sum and this next infinite sum looks just like this one except everywhere you see this 5 here you replace it with the number 239 so I'll rewrite it really quickly so like I said as you can see everywhere there was a 5 here you replace it with the number 239 and Mackin using this formula for pi was able to find 100 digits of pi. And after Mackin, many people were able to make slight variations of this formula, which they started to call Mackin like formula. And these were used for the next 250 years and the use of these formula culminates in the year 1946 so 1946 we have the mathematician Daniel Ferguson and using Mackin like formula he finds 620 digits of pi and another great example of Mackin like formula was found by the mathematician Leonard Euler and he was able to find that pi divided by 4 is equal to 1 half minus 1 over 3 times 2 cubed plus 1 over 5 times 2 to the fifth minus 1 over 7 times 2 to the seventh plus and so on this is infinitely long and he adds to this the infinite sum of one-third minus one over three times three cubed plus one over five times three to the fifth minus one over seven times three to the seventh and so on this is infinitely long and when you add these two infinite series together you get pi divided by four and another great accomplishment by the mathematician Euler was found in the year 1735 and this is actually known as the Basel problem which I have a video on and this problem is that 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared and so on this is infinitely long this equals pi squared divided by 6 and if you replace this exponent this 2 here with any other even exponent then the sum will add up to pi to that even power multiplied by some number so for example if I have 1 plus 1 over 
2 to the 4th plus 1 over 3 to the 4th, and so on. This adds up to pi to the 4th power divided by 90. And in the next video, I will introduce you to the computer era in terms of finding the digits of pi and the world record using supercomputers. And this is the current or present day record is 10 trillion digits of pi. And like I said in the next video I'll show you exactly how mathematicians using supercomputers are able to find these kind of results.